All right, today, well, oh, look at this. Aren't we blessed? Good morning, Jane. Uh, let's start 523. 5.3 is on uh, trig function values and angle measures. Now, I need to teach you all of this stuff, but what I'm actually going to, I'll tell you what, like, I'm not going to type you one because it's shit I don't remember, and there's, so, and there's no reason for me to expect you to remember it. The first thing is not one of them, now. Uh, we're starting off with a lot of right triangle and trig. So now we're not looking at angles in general. We're looking at right triangle, uh, like, base, definitions of stuff. So we're going to make a triangle. Call that theta. This is the right angle. We can label the sides A, B, and C. The side B side is opposite where the angle is, so we call it the opposite, or OPP for short. A, oh wow, this is a coincidence. A is next to it. Another word for next to is adjacent, so we're going to call it the adjacent side. And C, the longest side, the one opposite of the right angle is called the hypotenuse. I'll abbreviate that hip and I'll abbreviate that ADJ. And for those of you that have heard of Sokotoa before, this is where Sokotoa comes in. Sine, so SOH is sine opposite hypotenuse. And it's telling us that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite, opposite side over the hypotenuse. C is for cosine, and it's telling us that the adjacent cosine equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. I don't know why I spelled that one out, but I did. And T is for tangent. We've seen O and A already, they're opposite and adjacent. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And this matches up with what we did before. Like if I put this on the grid, then all of a sudden this is Y and this is X and this is R and all the same shit matches up. And of course we have the opposite ones or the reciprocal ones, cosecant theta is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. 
and cotangent beta is adjacent over opposite. So they teach the mnemonic of this by doing SOCATOA, doing the first letters of those words. And like if you remember, like sine was y over r. And that's matching up. Y is opposite, it's on top. R is the hypotenuse, it's on bottom. Cosine data was x over r, and tangent data was y over x. These all match up. We're actually not restricted to having the triangle like sit like that though. It doesn't need to be there. We just pick one A, B, C, and it doesn't matter which angle we use. Uh, I had opposite as B, let's make opposite A this time. It still follows the same stuff. At this point, this one's opposite, this one's adjacent, and this one's hypotenuse. You just have to relabel what's what's opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. So it works for any right triangle of any alignment. You would need to sub a couple of so right. Any questions so far? If you need it that longer, let me know. I don't see anyone still writing, so I'm switching. Uh, let's do some examples. Well, at least one example. Uh, we'll make a right triangle here. Let's say this is 77, 36, 85 in length. And we'll call this angle A, angle B, and angle C is the right angle triangle. Oftentimes when they do triangles, they'll put the letters outside, but they're generally talking about the angle there. And for this, let's find sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A, and then same with B. So if we're working with A, the side opposite A would be 36. The side adjacent to A is the shorter of the two sides that's next to it. That would be the 77. The longest side is always the hypotenuse.
So sine of A is opposite. Remember, we're doing Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over a hypotenuse. Opposite is 36. Hypotenuse is 85. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we have 77 over 85. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Why don't you guys try doing the ones for B real quick? You'll have to relabel the sides. Hypotenuse is going to stay the same. Opposite and adjacent are going to swap for B, though. Go over it together in a second. Another 30 seconds we'll do it together. I don't know what this fucking thing is supposed to do. All it ever does is make shit blurry. I don't know how it gets smudged. There's no reason for any like anything to ever get on that lens, but it's something it always does. And I see a little smudge mark when I look up. I'm like, that's fun. All right, so what do we get for sine of B? Anyone else get that? Yep. What about cosine of B? Holy shit, a class that participates? What the fuck is this? Are y'all okay? I love it. All right, tangent. Holy shit, now I'm more than a boy. You're gonna make me feel special, do you? Be careful. You might become my favorite class. All right, do we notice anything about this stuff? Anything that, like, if we look at the, the results from A and the results of B, is there anything that stands out to you? Yeah. Uh, well, sine and cosine A and sine and B and cosine B. Yeah, they all have the same, these all have the same denominator. Hopefully that should be the case. Anything else? Sine A equals sine B and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Same is going on with the sines. So if you've got a right triangle, And we say A and B are not the right angles. Then sine A equals cosine B. And cosine A equals sine B. And this one, tangent kind of flipped, right? <laughs> Like it did a flippy. So like tangent A 
is cotangent B. And while this isn't obvious from looking at it, there's also the case that secant A is the same thing as cosecant B. And we can swap the letters of any of these two and make them the same. It means the same thing. These are called cofunctions. I'll be honest, the only one I remember is the sine A cosine B one. The tangent one is kind of irrelevant. But it is handy to know that in a right triangle with sine cosine switch, you can just change which angle you're looking at. Now in a triangle, Triangles add up to 180 degrees. And the right angle is 90 degrees. Which means A plus B plus 90 degrees equals 180. So a plus B equals 90 if we just subtract 90 from both sides. And if I subtract A from both sides, I get B equals 90 degrees minus A. So another way of looking at sine A equals cosine B, I'm going to take that B and replace it with the 90 minus A. Sine A equals cosine of 90 degrees minus A. And I'm going to write all six of these. These are called the cofunction identities. So cosine A is sine of 90 minus A. Secant A is cosecant of 90 minus A. If you'll notice, I keep looking over at my paper because I don't have these memorized. So guess that what, what that means for you. I'm not really going to expect you to memorize this. But it is good to get some practice in when it shows up like on the homework and stuff. Because uh, maybe it sticks with you better than it sticks with me, and you'll be able to do this stuff faster than I will. I always have to stop and think, is it plus A, is it minus A? Which ones do which? We can't see them And the problem is because I've seen the graphs, and so I can see they look very similar, they just look shifted. So I never remember am I adding or subtracting. We'll get to the graphs eventually, and that'll throw you off the The graphs are neat. At least for some of them.
So on the same page, because I do not want to contaminate the next page with this garbage. I hate co-function identities, but to give you a little bit of practice, uh, rewrite in terms of the co-function. Let's do sine of 16 degrees, uh, cotangent of 38 degrees, and let's do secant of 45 degrees. Pause, give me time to think about it, write down, finish writing. All right, so if we sine goes with cosine, we should be able to do this as cosine of 90 minus 16. And that's looking like 74 degrees. About tangent. Cotangent goes to tangent. What is that one? 52. What about the final one? It's going to be cosecant. I heard the final answer. Uh, we'll write out the actual calculation for it real quick. What's coming next is probably with some of the most important shit and trick you're ever going to remember. Hopefully, remember. Folks are still right and hanging patiently. Anyone got good plans for this weekend? Yes. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Having fun studying. You what? Having fun studying? <laughs> That's the right answer. We actually do have a little bit of fun over at the Mesa Center on Saturdays, and Keith is a, a regular there. What do you guys do there? Just exactly what he said, study. But, like, I'm not in teacher mode, I'm not lecturing, so, like, when I'm not helping on a problem, either joking about something or whatever. Doing different stuff. They got sidetracked trying to help out students. 
That was entertaining. All right, does anyone need this lever? All right, so there are, in addition to the zero degrees and 90 degrees, there are three very, very important angles between zero and 90 that we're gonna write out. That is 30, 45, and 60. And we're gonna write out what sine theta is, cosine theta, and we can do tangent theta. Let me put some. And the way I remember this, you easily fill in the table, sine of zero is zero. So, but don't just write in the zero, check this out. For each thing in the sine column, I'm gonna put, make a fraction where the denominator is two. Okay, and on the top, I'm going to start with zero, but I'm going to start with square root of zero. And then I'm going to go down the list and just increase by one. Everybody can count to four, presumably. You made it that this far. I'm hoping that's not an excessive uh, thing here. Now, what's the square root of zero? Zero divided by two? Zero. zero. What's the square root of one? One. So we've got one divided by two is one half. Square root of two doesn't clean up, and square root of three doesn't clean up. What's the square root of four? Two. two. So this is two over two, and what's two over two? One. One. Is that not a nice, simple pattern? At least the left side. The right side doesn't follow an obvious pattern, but the left side has a nice pattern there. And the good thing about cosine is it's the exact same thing in the opposite order. We'll have a two in the denominator on all of them. And we'll start off with square root of four on top and go down to zero. So zero, one half, I'm just writing them in the opposite order. But we could rediscuss the math, like square root of four is two over two is one. Simple pattern? Patterns are nice, they make things easier to remember. Now, you can memorize tangent theta. A lot of people do. I literally, every once in a while, I, 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 know, I know some of them by memory. Like, I know tangent of theta is zero, but we're really doing sine over cosine. So zero over one is zero. Then if we do 30 degrees, we have sine, which is one half, divided by cosine, which is three over two. And if you clean that up a little bit, you get one over root three, which is root three over three.
45, I have root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. I have the same thing on top and bottom. That's a 1. We do 60. We have root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, just ends up being root 3. We multiply top and bottom by 2, it clears the fractions. And this is 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. Now, if you want to do this as a path, I just thought of a way that you could do this as a path of tangent. This is square root of 0 over 4. This is square root of 1 over 3. So the top keeps increasing, the bottom keeps decreasing. And cleaning those up. It's basically the numerators. Ignore the two on the sine and cosine. As a reminder, it, like this means you can split the radical up to square root of one on top and square root of three on bottom, kind of thing. Pick up Davis. You guys ready for the next important part that goes with this, like peanut butter and nut butter jelly? So let's say we have a circle around here. That is not my worst circle, but clearly not my best. So like 45 is like the y equals x line. This is 45 degree line. And I'll extend it that way. And like 30 degrees is like that. It's like breaking up this right upper right thing into three sections. So that's my 30 degree line, and that's my 60 degree line. Because remember, the angle theta goes off that right there. And I'll go ahead and put in zero degrees right here and 90 degrees up here. It turns out we can do it in the other direction as well. Do the, the diagonal this way. I'm trying to keep the colors the same. This is going to act like a 45 degree line. Do the red closest to the x axis. Yep. 
That's going to act like the 30 degree line. And this will be 60 degrees. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we have something called the reference angle. The reference angle of theta, we call it theta prime or theta apostrophe. This is the angle made between the angle we're looking at and the x-axis. We'll do a little picture here first without all the colors on it, and then like, and then hopefully you'll see the benefit of it. So that's our angle theta. Going like that, we will go, we can go up like that from the x axis on the other side. This will have be theta prime. I can do the same thing on the other side going down that amount, theta prime. Do the same thing going down this direction, theta prime. Where theta is the same as theta prime in terms of how far it is from the x axis. Does that make sense? And it's always from the x-axis, never the y-axis. We're always going off the x-axis, the black, the horizon, basically. Yeah. That make case number. The sine would be negative, and the cosine is going to be positive. It turns out the sines and cosines for these. Like whatever I have here, sine theta, cosine theta, well, other way around, cosine usually goes with x, cosine theta and sine theta, they match up over here in all the quadrants with the reference angles. The only thing you got to do is pay attention to the sign. So like in this upper left quadrant, cosine is negative, but sine is positive. We're above the y-axis, but we're left of the x. Or we're above the y, we're above the x-axis, left of y. This quadrant, they're both negative. This quadrant, they're both positive. Like to give you an example, let's say we had sine of 30 degrees, or let's say we're looking at theta is 30 degrees. If I go backwards 30 degrees, this is like the 150 degree angle. And if I go forward 30 degrees from there, remember this is the 180 degree line. I go forward 30 degrees, this is 210.
This is the zero or 360 line. If I go that way, I'm going backwards 30, so minus 30, that makes this angle 350. Isn't that 330? 330. How about that? Look at me knowing how to subtract three from six. <laughs> I'm, I'm legendary. That's that's some good shit right there. Let me rewrite it. 330. Bunch of people trying to thank you. Don't make me wait. Don't like to leave it up there for a while and everybody's like, what the fuck? And no one says it. You guys are giving me a great class. I love this. All right, so. Like the sine, like cosine at 30 degrees. If we look at our table up there, this was root three over two and sine of 30 was one half. Knowing those two values, I can quickly do, let's do put in cosine of 150, Cosine of 210, cosine of 330, and we'll have the sine versions of each of these as well. They have the exact same numerical value, you just got to check signs. Cosine is negative over here to the left, and sine is negative below there. I wish I had it in right there. I lost pocket. So all of these cosines are going to have a root three over two. Just some of them are going to be negative. The 150 and the 210 are the to the left. The left side of the graph is where x is negative. So 150 and 210 are negative root 3 over 2. And on the right side, they're all going to have a one half. All the signs will have a one half. And now we're just looking at the signs there. Below the x axis is where y is negative. So the 210 and the 330 should have negative on them. So rather than making a table that goes from zero to 360 degrees with like every 30 degree mark and every 45 degree mark, we only need to know, you only need to memorize this region, memorize sines and cosines here, and then you can use reference angles for the rest.
So let's practice finding reference angles. Uh, fine, and it, it works for anything, not just the zero or the 30, 45, 60. Find the reference angle for, let's start with maybe something like uh, 294. The way we do it is we say, okay, which quadrant is that in? So what? So remember, so if you don't know, go and add 90 degrees going around and we'll see that it should be quadrant four. That would be the 294 degrees. So our reference angle is this one. So we're gonna say that, just to figure it out, we'll do 360 minus 294. That's 66 degrees. And maybe let's try like, you might be going around several times. Let's do like 861 degrees. Maybe some practice with some previous half that, but. Okay. Go ahead and try to work this one out. Do it together and then we'll take a break. So what do I got to do on this one? You want to subtract 861 um, uh, 360 uh, minus 2 times 360 because it's going around minus, two times. So, so go around a couple times? Yes. Keep decreasing this until we get down to under 360. Is that 141? Yes. So we'll what be quadrant in the... is 141 in? Quadrant two. I'm not sure how far. Uh, about that much. So if I want to get the reference angle, what do I got to do? We don't want to do 360. Oh, it's fine. This is the 180 mark. And we're going backwards. It's off the x-axis, yes. So we'll do 
180 minus the 141, and we get 39 degrees. And you may be wondering, you may be wondering why why subtracting here? Well, remember the the entire thing is 180 degrees, and if I don't know what this is, we're saying 141 degrees plus my reference angle equal 180 degrees. That's really what's going on here. And then we're just jumping to the subtracting. And the reason why these numbers are well known, well, first off, that 45 degree line makes like a perfect diagonal, which makes a really good brace in engineering and stuff like that. We use it a lot. And it turns out 30, 60, 90 triangle shows up an awful lot too in things that we design and build. Uh, let's take a five or 10 minute break. So if you just like, if you had a kind of reference angle for 180, would we subtract it for 260? If we had a kind of like the, the, yeah, the reference angle for 190. 190, so like if you had 190, 190 would be past the 180 mark right there. Yeah. You always are going to the x axis. So the x-axis is back that way. And that way is 180 degrees. So like the difference between 190 degrees and 180 degrees would be 10 degrees. Pause recording so we don't have a big old. Uh, for those of you watching by video and not Zoom or in class, take a moment to try to calculate the reference angles and values of 220 or 225 degrees. Do together. The way I memorize the 30, 60, 90 forum, the only one I have immediately in my head is sine 30 is one half. I know there's a root two over two and a root three over two, and they go up from there. And then I just remember cosine, you know, like it goes the other way. But sine, once it's one half, is easy to remember. And it's with the smallest sine angle. So I, I just memorize that and I fill in the gaps when I need it. <laughs> But that's because I know I'm all work. They work. You might flash part it for a little while. I have a student on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. His name is Alfredo, which immediately makes me think of chicken Alfredo. <laughs> and I told him that because I see him like at, I start seeing him at like three o'clock, well after lunch, dinner's approaching. And so I told him last night, I'm like, about like four, four thirty, you know, when I, I want chicken Alfredo every day. When I see it, it like, mm -hmm. makes me think of having some pasta. And he's like, that's great. I'm going to go home and tell my family that I make my teacher hungry. <laughs> and I'm like, that sounds wrong. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, you have an ad slip. Yes. Okay, so let me do the ad for you after class. After class? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Don't leave though, take a seat. Oh. Learn something. It's the point of crashing the class, right? Yep. So what quadrant is 225? The quadrant three, right? And what is our reference angle there? We got to go off the closest x axis. So the closest x axis is there. This is 180. So the difference between 225 and 180 is 45 degrees. So that is a 45 degree angle right there which means it has the same values as the 45 degree angle over here. We just have to pay attention to the sign. So what we're, yeah. Yes, if we made a triangle, it would be a 45, 45. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. The 45 degrees is special because it makes a 45, 45, 90. And the 30 degrees we like because it makes a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Those are like special triangles in engineering and stuff. In this case, I have to do that. We're going off to 45. What was cosine of 45? So cosine of 45 was root 2 over 2. What was sine of 45? Same. Same thing. So What's cosine of 225 degrees? Negative root two over two, that's right. Has the same value, but we're on the left side. X is negative over here. Cosine is negative over here. What about sine? Also negative root two over two, excellent. What is tangent? That's one. Divide those two, the negatives cancel, the values cancel, we just have a one. Uh, what about uh, opposite of cosecant or cosine is secant? Let's do secant next. Ends up being negative root two. Uh, if you flip it, because we'll have negative two over root two, you multiply top and bottom by root two. And we get negative two root two over two. And then the twos cancel and we get negative root two. What about cosecant? Same as secant. Cotangent? Yeah, I just flip over tangent at that point. One. All right. We all seem to. Enjoy that one. Enjoy might be a uh, <laughs> uh, stretch, but maybe you will grow to enjoy it. Uh, try 300 degrees.
I have one of those mornings where you're looking for your card keys or keys in general. And you're like, I know exactly where they should be. They were there. I put them there last night. Looking for them for five or ten minutes, and then you realize they're, they've been in your pocket the whole fucking time. That was me this morning. I don't remember putting them in my pocket, but apparently I did it as soon as I stood up and had my pants on. I put them in my pocket. Then I brushed my hair, and then I went to grab my stuff to go, like my wallet. The fuck I'm like, my wife's sleeping. I'm trying to not make noise. Getting ready to start cussing. <laughs> I think I was walking to the, like, I'm like, maybe I left them in my office at, in, at home. And I think they, one of the keys teeped against another as I stepped. And I heard that sound and made me go, what? Yeah, okay, I'll never. That was today. What quadrant is 300 in? Four. So uh, this is 270, so 300 is a little bit closer to it than the other one. So how do I get the reference angle? Yeah, this would be, all the way would be 360. But we don't want to go all the way over, so we're going to go back. And that's the angle we're looking for. 360 minus 300 is 60 degrees. So what's sine of 60 and cosine of 60? Okay. So we'll make a list we're doing now. That's our reference angle ones. We want to look at 300. So what's cosine of 300? No. Why? Because it's um, positive side of the y-axis. That's right. Cosine is related to x. x is on positive over there. Uh, so cosine is still going to be positive. What about sine? It's negative. Sine is related to y. We're below the x-axis. We're on the bottom half of the graph. That's where y is negative. So this is going to be negative of the 60 degrees. Negative root 3 over 2. Well, tangent. Looks like negative root 3 if we do the division. And here you're literally... Multiplying by two, we get negative root three on top, one on bottom, which is just that. What about secant of 30 degrees or 300 degrees? Two. You're slipping over one half. Sine of, or not sine, cosecant of. 300. So if we flip it, you'll have the negative 2 over root 3, rationalize it, and we do get negative 2 root 3 over 3. Jesus, that looks like shit. And finally, cotangent. Was that fine? <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> what? Science. That's all, that's really what you got to remember. And it's and and don't think about it in terms of sine and cosine. At first, you got to just realize like this is related to the x and y graph, 
x is positive over on this side, and x is negative over here. And those are related to our cosines. x has the same sign as cosine. And if you look at our y's, y is positive up top, and y is negative down below, and y is related to our sums. Yeah? That, that doesn't change if we stop it. That's just the case. Yeah, it's always the case. Yes. I'm gonna say yes because not every we don't have like not every triangle is on the axis. But if we put it on the grid with the x and y, those those correlations always happen. Assuming you're doing the angle from the center outward. That that's like the origin has to be the angle has to start from the origin. Okay, so uh, like how do we find trig functions? So finding trig function values. In general. So step one. If theta is less than zero degrees or theta is greater than 360 degrees, find the coterminal angle. That was a word from the other day, which is the angle between zero and 360. That's the same. And we did that earlier with the 861, you guys. Step two, find the reference angle. Now, once we have that, this should be clear. Because uh, we just did the step multiple times. Find the trig value for the reference angle. Step four is check to see if it should be negative. Based on the quadrant. Cosine is a negative in Q2 and Q3. Sine is negative in Q3 and Q4. So what is sine of negative 150 degrees? Um, I thought cosine was for the x. 
The x-axis would wouldn't it be negative in three and four tools for the x? Isn't that around the bottom? No, x is negative on the left side of the graph. Oh yeah, sure. My bad. It feels weird because well, we like we say when you're talking about which axis is above or below or left or right, it's the opposite letter of what you're looking at. Like X is negative to the left of the Y axis. So you're going off the other letter. Yeah, that's what confused me. Yeah, that's, that's not unusual. Well, where are we with this? What, what, what quadrant? I heard two and three. How do I figure out which button? Or like, what's the negative one fifty mean? Which way do I go? I go. I go backward, right? Negative is this direction. So that's that would be negative ninety. This would be negative one eighty. Looks like I'm entering up over here, and that looks like quadrant three. So how do I find my reference angle? That's a good way to go. So we're not in the right range. So let's add 360 to it. And that's going to get us up to 210. So negative 150 degrees is the same thing as 210 degrees. That's it. It's probably easier to do that one first, but I was going off what people were saying, and like that works as long as you get it figured out. That's what matters. So what what's the reference angle here, or how do I find it? Two ten minus one eighty would give us this region right here. That is the reference angle. Uh, so theta is going to be 210 minus 180, 30 degrees. So what is sine of negative 150? Is it one half? I heard negative half and one positive one half. Which one is it? It should be negative because we are looking at Sine, which is a y related to y, and it's below, it's in the bottom half of the graph where y is negative. All right, what about cotangent of 780? I said 780, and I started to write something completely different. That is 780, yes. That is 7. I'll warn you now, this isn't going to be on the first test, but on the second test, there will be a portion that I'll hand you half the test first, calculator free, spilling out this trig wheel and filling in the values. No calculator on that one. That's not the one test coming up, it's the one after. We're going to have ratings by then. You'll, you'll see a nice way to remember it. Is it you, if you know how to, if you practice it, you can do it in like five minutes tops. That's slow if you know what you're doing. But I see people reaching for the calculator to do this rather than doing it the right way. I'm going to go with right way. What do I do here? How do I gotta find how do I find what I want to find? Can I can I do what we did last time and just go to 780 first? 
Because it's kind of hard though, right? As soon as I get past like going around 360, now I'm starting to, well, that's a little bit of a mind fuck. So like, let's get it down to our, our co-terminal angle. Let's keep track, subtracting 360 till we get to where we want to go. So this should uh, be- Our calculator. What? Oh. Well, so what is cotangent at 60 degrees? Is it? I have no idea. Uh, cotangent is cosine over sine, and that is one half over root three over two. So multiply by two. I get one over root three, so yeah. When I rationalize, I got that. I literally don't have the tan any of like cotangents and shit like that memorized. Memorizing cotangent, cosecant, or secant is effort and I want to tax my brain. Are we ready for more fun? Are we having fun? All right. Find all values of theta. Uh, between zero and 360, let's say. That satisfy. Sine of theta equals negative root three over two. Oh, this is a little tricky. What what's a good tactic to try to tackle this? Anyone have any ideas on what we could do? Um, so I started by talking um, in the chart we wrote earlier, which one is uh, sine theta equals square root of three over two. That's a great start. So let's start with doing the positive one. That will give us what? 60. It gives us 60 degrees, which is our reference angle. So now we got to go, well, what's the next step? Where is sine negative? That seems like a reasonable next step. Which quadrants are, is sine negative in? Three and four. So we're looking at down here and down here. And so six degrees, remember, is always off the x-axis. So what angles are those? How'd you get that? Uh, add 60 to 180 and subtract from the three. That's exactly how I do it. This is 60 degrees past the 180. 180 plus 60 is 240. And this is backwards, so like a negative 60 degrees. And we have 300. So the answer is 240 degrees or 300 degrees. Well, more of an and, not four.
Okay. So calculator trick. We gotta talk about it because it's not as obvious as you want to think it is because there are three ways that we describe angles. You guys have looked at angles in degrees, but we are going to learn in chapter six, chapter six, angles and radians. And there's even a third way that I have no idea what it's about before. And gradients. There's a third way. Some calculators have a DRG button. Some don't. Finding which one it is is helpful. Uh, depending on your calculator, it usually will say, many of them say on the screen what mode you're currently in. Let's see if I can make Okay, so right here, that is a little R, well, capital R. It's telling me my calculator is in radian modes. If I do, and I want to show the difference, we know sine of 30 degrees is one half, right? If I do sine of 30 in radian mode, I don't get one half. I am in radian mode, not degree mode. So I need to switch to degree mode. Every calculator is different. If you've got one like mine, mine hits mode and it brings up this menu. And if I hit mode again, it brings up a menu for degrees, radians, gradients. And I hit one and it changes to gradients or degrees. And now I can use sine of 30 and get the right value, 0.5. When you are doing this, like on the first test, I don't mind if you use the calculator because uh, it's going to take time to memorize that those values. Uh, but you should do this test when you start using your calculator. Make sure you're in the right mode. Sometimes the calculator reverts to radian mode because it's the most commonly used mode. Uh, just check sine of 30 right away. If you don't get one half, which is 0.5, you're in the wrong mode. So other than that, uh, so pro tip, <clears throat> test sine of 30 to make sure you get one half. Or 0 0.5. If not, you're in the wrong mode. So some of them are fairly straightforward to do. If I want cosine of 193.622 degrees, once you know you're in the right mode, you just plug it in. And hit the cosine button, there you go. No, I didn't. That's the wrong button. Okay. I am getting negative 0 0.9718706. And don't round unless it tells you to. Other ones aren't as simple. Like if I want to do tangent of 68 degrees, 43 minutes. Well, I don't know how to do minutes in my calculator. So what I need to do is convert this to a decimal. So remember 68, we did this, I don't know if it was last class or the class before, 43 minutes, if I want to turn that to a decimal, 
or turn it to degrees, I gotta do 60 minutes equals one degree, multiply by that. Or that ends up being 43 divided by 60. So I have 43 divided by 60 plus the 68 I started with. 43 divided by 60 plus 68. I'm getting this is the same as tangent of 68.7166666, blah, 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 blah. Most calculators have an answer button. If I just do tangent, I hit the answer key. It'll take what I have and store it in. I'll using the tangent button. And we're getting Some things don't show up on your calculator. Calculator will not do that. So you have to know how the trig works. If I want cosecant of 35.8471 degrees, there is no cosecant button on most calculators. If the calculator has one, I'm great. Most don't, right? So what we got to do is look at its related function. What is this one related to? Sine. sine. So this is going to be the same as one over sine of the same angle. So that's what you got to do in your calculator. One divided by sine of 35.8471. Why don't you guys try secant of negative 287? See what you guys come up So what should I do here? Okay. My calculator will do a negative degree. Oh, it does. That's handy. Another way is to get this into uh, the right area, zero to 360. So I'll add 360 to it and I get 73. I'm doing one over cosine of 73 degrees should also get me that.
And this is starting with the weird angle and getting the value, but sometimes we got to go the other direction. So like, let's say we have cosine theta equals 0 0.92118541. How do I find theta? So this hopefully rings a bell for you. Inverse functions and regular functions wipe themselves out and they cancel each other out. Like the inverse of a function. You put one function, you put the function in the inverse or the other way around and it just spits out X. Or you put the inverse into the function and it will just spit out X. In this case, X is theta. We usually use F of X, but here we're doing theta. So like cosine inverse of cosine theta just gives me theta, which means I need to do the cosine inverse of both sides. And a lot of calculators will show this. Let's see if you guys can see it. That's not happening either. Right above my sine and cosine, you can barely see it. There's a sine negative one, cosine negative one. For mine, it's the same color as the shift key. So if I want to do this, I got to do shift, cosine. I don't know if it did it. Let me make sure that's shift, cosine. Yeah, there we go. It didn't do it. It'll say the cosine negative one. And then I'm entering in that value. 0.92118541. And it tells me 22, it looks like 22.9 degrees. I'd go like if I wanted two decimal places, maybe I'd do 0 0.90 just to make it clear. And let's kick up the difficulty a notch. Like let's do cotangent of an angle. 1.4466474. And we want theta, yeah. So we want theta. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this as one over tangent theta equals 1.4466474. And you can do like the cross multiply or it, I'm flipping the fraction here. If I flip, tangent theta goes on top on the left side and this goes on the bottom on the right side. And then we have a tangent inverse key. So I'll do tangent inverse of this and tangent inverse of that. So I have tangent inverse of uh, one over 
Now, if you try to do it all at once, you might need to use parentheses key. I'm going to do the division first and then use the answer key. One divided by 1.4466474. That's just getting the inside. So this is like the same as tangent inverse at 0 0.69125345. And then I will do my tangent inverse of that. And then theta equals 34.654. Three zero zero three six degrees, yeah. and we can round as needed for whatever we're doing. There's one more thing I'm going to cover it on with five point four. It's like an application, and five point four is applications of this stuff. So, uh, if you've been to a problem, if you're working on five point three homework over the weekend, and they there's something about force or grade resistance or something like that, we're going to do that on. Uh, Max, have a good weekend, GTFO. Remember, I'm at the Mason on Saturdays from 9 to 12. <laughs>